You know, this is live on the radio. So I'd like to start by saying, fuck. Ah, well, hello there, you handsome viewer, you, and thank you for tuning in to my all-new show, Album Autopsy, where I take some of my favorite albums, I break them down track by track, and talk about all the fine details, or the deets, as I'm going to call them, only this one time. My whole goal here is to share some of my favorite albums with you, dear listener, and hopefully by the end, there'll be some of your favorites, too, or if you already have known these albums, you'll know a little more than you needed to. Today's album is Queens of the Stone Age by Queens of the Stone Age. Now, I'm not really one for picking favorites, especially in a topic like music that's so diverse and broad and hard to compare, but if I did have to pick a favorite album, it's probably this one. I will not lie to you, I've listened to this album a disgusting amount of times, but for good reason, because it is fucking good. I love how raw this album is with the down-tuned instruments and how the guitar and bass are panned to the hard left and right like a real live show with like a bassist and a guitarist on the side of the stage. It's pretty sweet. Uh, the lyrics of this album are all just weird and ironic and just sort of like sarcastic and they got a, a beautiful juxtaposition that I'll get into. And speaking of getting into, let's get into this, starting with track one where most albums start. Well, we're kicking things off with Regular John, one of the coolest sounding songs on the album, in my opinion, but also apparently in a lot of other people's opinion, because this one is definitely a fan favorite, and it's not really hard to hear why. It's a great way to start the album with the up-tempo, kind of driving rhythm, the staccato chords, and it's it's really weird because it's all based around just that one chord, that one C chord chugging along for the verse. It's really the way that Hami delivers the lines that make this um, interesting. He sings it in his like upper register, almost like a falsetto, and it sounds kind of calm and collected, but also at the same time vulnerable. And uh, speaking of the lyrics, they are about a number on a bathroom stall, and I know anybody who's used a public restroom most likely at one point in time has seen a number written there. It's kind of what this song's about, but about a, the narrator being so bored or unfulfilled or desperate even, that they are willing to just call this number and just pursue whoever or whatever is on the other line. Uh, the lines, your home number's on the wall, I just had to call, had to, I'm not the only one who will run with a knife, basically sum that entire premise up. I like how he repeats the number 16278263789 a bunch throughout the song, really reinforcing the phone theme, and it just sounds cool when he does it. Um, it's a really weird song topic to start your album off on, but for some reason it works really good and I really like this track. Avon is a really fun track. I love that intro that you just heard, those like that bouncy escalation thing with the drums matching it. It's pretty sweet. The meat and bones of this song are cool too, just that three chord progression that just goes up and then reverses back. It's I like that. Uh, I love the fucking chorus on this song. It's got those weird shifting chords and Hami doing those doo doo doos. Which remind me like old doo wop or something. It's something you wouldn't necessarily expect to hear on something like this, and that's what makes me like it. The lyrics on this one are a bit harder to decipher than regular John, but I think they're about normal society just going through daily tasks and the normal grind, just acting like robots and just not realizing it. For example, the first line, I see you go through a park in a haze and I don't listen for traffic going the same way, seems to be about the narrator and someone else they watch just go become part of normal society and the narrator of the song you know he didn't see the traffic he didn't listen to the traffic going the same way meaning he didn't go with the flow he didn't win his own way the line after that says a simple system i string him up i cut him down dare i say and to me this sounds like it's describing the monotony of just a regular job or you know some kind of tedious labor using butcher imagery stringing up animals cutting them down perhaps or could be puppet imagery 
I've heard people talk about uh, leading somebody on emotionally and just cutting ties with them. Uh, it's hard to say and it can be interpreted in many ways, but that's kind of the great thing about music. It could mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. Oh, and one little fun fact before we move on. Uh, Avon was originally a Desert Sessions track from Volumes 3 and 4, paired with another song with the exact same instrumentation, but with a different singer and vocals. Uh, they're called Avon and Nova, so, because Nova is Avon backwards. It's pretty sweet. You should check it out if you can find it. Now this album doesn't have a single, but if it did, it would totally be this song, and it's really not hard to hear why. I mean, this thing, it sounds like a pop song ran through this album's filter through early Queens of the Stone Ages kind of sound, if that makes any sense. It's got that really catchy riff that sort of sounds like the Stooges' I Wanna Be Your Dog, but like in reverse. It's got a ton of solos, and the chorus, man, that fucking chorus is catchy. One little detail I enjoy about this song is how it starts and ends. Uh, it it kind of starts with the guitar, the bass comes in, the drums come in, you know, pretty standard, but on the end it reverses that, and the bass goes away, the drums go away, and then it's just the guitar again, and it kind of deconstructs itself, and that's a pretty cool little detail. Now, at first, the lyrics of this one sort of sound like a love song, but then the more you look at it, it starts to sound like it's about drugs, which it is, but I also think it's about both. For example, the first line, if it gets you down, well, then I'll take it. He's obviously referencing downers. If it gets you up, well, I don't want it, referencing uppers. The next line, though, it let you down so brokenhearted. It's pretty weird by itself, but after that, it all makes sense with the line, if it gets you down, well, then I want it. See, it's using drug themes to convey a message of an abusive relationship. Saying if it gets you down, you, the other person in the relationship, well then I'll take it. If it gets you up, I don't want it. Then the, it lets you down, so broken hearted. And the other line starts to make sense. So it, it's pretty dark meaning cleverly wrapped up in there in this upbeat sort of uh, poppy sounding song. Here's where the album starts to get weird with Walking on the Sidewalks, and this song just sounds just bizarre. It's just, I love it. It sounds so disjointed and shifty, and the riff is just weird. I mean, it's, I think it's a standard time signature, but it's the notes they choose to play and choose not to play that makes it sound so heavy and just bizarre. In an interview you could find somewhere, Josh stated this song was about a dream, but more likely a drug trip he had where uh, he was walking around the sidewalks with a bunch of people, like everybody, and they all just knew each other, and then they just all sort of floated off into space. Which sounds like a really weird premise for a song, and it is, but the visual imagery and the, um, I guess like the themes present in the lyrics just really paint a great mental image and have a great vibe that just seems to fit perfectly with the really abstract weird music. And I can't really say with too much authority, but this one kind of seems to be overlooked by fans a little bit, but uh, at least for me, this one holds a special place in my heart. Like, this is one of my favorite tracks on the album. Uh, so before we talk about anything real, I want to talk about that sweet-ass telephone solo, which I've actually seen videos of them pulling out a phone and doing that live, so that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, this song is the first, like, slower song on the album, and it's fucking trippy and weird. From a song structure standpoint, the song's pretty interesting in that it's like that, it's just a weird riff forever, and then once it does hit the chorus, it just kind of teases at it a little bit, and then it goes away. And then it kind of comes back a little bit, and it just goes away. And then finally at the end of the song you get to the real chorus and it like expands and gets bigger and more bold and it just feels like such a great payoff by the time you finally make it there. The lyrics of this song seem to be about uh, people who do drugs and people that don't and how people scoff drug users or uh, you know look down upon them even though they've never tried them themselves using you would know as like a sarcastic response like well you would know you know that sort of thing uh, the lines don't forget to remember the devil's got pills in his eyes look laugh but don't touch cut you down to size seems to be about how society 
used drugs, I guess, and that they're evil. Uh, you can look and laugh at them, but, but don't touch, don't get into them, because it'll cut you down to size. Now, that is just one verse, but the other two share that theme. The first one's talking about how people that do and people that don't do drugs started from the same place, and they're spreading out into different paths, but they're really not that different. And the other one seems to be about a uh, relationship and a girl's father being angry at the narrator for maybe introducing the girl to drugs or something, or maybe from his bias or not seeing things the way the narrator of the song is seeing. Uh, it's pretty interesting. How to Handle a Rope is a punk rock fuzz fest that's just short, sweet, and to the point, and it always leaves me wanting more, because right as it gets to this great part, it ends. Now the chord progression of this song is fairly simple, but by replacing one of those chords with that bend, it is infinitely cooler, and that bend just sounds so nasty. The drums on this track are some of my favorite on the album, because it just sounds like a caveman wailing on big-ass tribal drums with some dinosaur bones. It's sweet. Also, one of the coolest things about this song is how it just picks up the pace, like, at the end, into this, like, escalating riff, and then it just stops. Like, it just starts going real fast, and then it's over, and it, it's so weird, and it always makes me want to listen to it again, though, so I, that was the point, uh, A-plus, I guess. Now, the lyrical content of this, to me, sounds like a song about a friend of the narrator of the song who is has a drug problem, and they're trying to tell him, trying to make him see, and they just won't. The uh, first line says, Too late to think or filter anymore. A bitter pill to swallow, cause maybe you're in a blanket haze of epidrine. I'm wondering where the hell you've been, so come on and write this wrong. The rope. So it sounds like somebody who is just binging on the prescription pills, I think? Um, and they're just gone, you know? And the person's like, where have you been, you know? Like, what are you doing? And it's too late for them to think or filter, you know? Their mind is just fried. Uh, this is an excerpt of the chorus, but it says, You've got it all right, you've got a feeling, Cause devils and ropes around your neck, cursing them all, And you can't hear it, can't hear it. It sounds like the, uh, the, the devils and ropes are like a noose, And the devils are the, the bad, the problems, the drugs, the addiction, or whatever. You can't hear the warnings, you just can't. And I think that you got it all right and you got a feeling. It's probably him trying to reassure the narrator that, um, or the other person rather, is trying to reassure the narrator that they got this, they're fine, it's really not that big a deal. Now what's interesting is the second time around the chorus, the perspective flips to be about the narrator having been doing the noose and devils around their neck and not hearing the warnings. And it's hypocritical on purpose and I really like that. It, it shows that the narrator was just as susceptible and thought he was fine, so it's, uh, I like that a lot. On a recentish poll on the Queens of the Stone Age subreddit, this song was voted the best song on the album, and god damn it, I have to agree. It is, it's, it's the best on the album, like, it's so good. If you're just gonna listen to one song on this album, make it this one, because, I don't know, this just has it all. It's got this heavy intro, it's got these weird bends, it's just a two chord progression for the verse, but it just sounds so grand and big and inspirational and just beautiful and heavy. I love it. In interviews, Josh has talked about how this song is about a little bit of trouble he got into on a trip to Mexico. And um, instead of analyzing the lyrics on this one, I just want to focus on one just to kind of give you the vibe. And that line is, setting sun feels hands of gold. And what just a gorgeous metaphor for a sunset using gambling imagery. I think that really sums up the vibe. Something kind of gritty and grimy and real world like gambling and pairing with something like a sunset really kind of sums up the vibe and the sort of tones and the kind of mishmash of two worlds. It kind of, I don't know, it creates just such a perfect image in your head and the music and the way the lyrics are, it just creates this humongous sounding just fantastical journey sort of thing with this song so I mean I, I can't really recommend it any more than I have just listen to this one if you're gonna listen to just one trust me This 
Hispanic Impressions truly is some carnival-ass bullshit. Uh, the name's taken from a Hendrix song, Manic Depression, and the riff in that song sounds kind of like the riff in this song if you took that riff and drug it through a funhouse mirror. Uh, I like all the starts and stops in this song, the uh, ba da 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 ba da 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 because they do them a different amount of times and in different intervals, which means the song was probably a huge pain in the ass to learn. This one at first might be a little weird to get into. I know it took me a few listens before I kind of started getting into it and appreciating it, but I do now, and it's one of very few instrumental Queens of the Stone Age tracks, and it uh, kind of makes me wish they would have explored that a little more. This track is a nice blended groovy smoothie of creepy and just groovy as butt. Now what I mean by that is this song rides along on that groovy bass line the whole time and things are added and taken away but that bass line continues the whole time and it's just so just good and smooth and instead of coming up with words I'm literally bobbing back and forth like an idiot to the music so if you can imagine that uh, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay, onto the creepy part. The uh, title is a play on a Zeppelin title, I Can't Quit You Baby. Well, this is You Can't Quit Me Baby, and it quite literally is You Cannot Quit Me. It is not an option. And that's what this song's about. It is a creepy, obsessive love song that has a uh, dark ending to it. So the first verse, I'm going to paraphrase, it's basically saying he followed this chick home, crawled in her window, and he says, life is a trip when you're psycho in love, and I know. So that's creepy. Um, he then later goes on to talk about following this chick's friends and slashing and cut, cutting himself and bleeding in a sink. And then he drops the line, I want you to notice that when I'm not around, wherever you are. So it escalates into a suicide over this chick. And then the last line repeated through this song is, You're solid gold, I'll see you in hell. So it's... Probably not doing it exactly justice by paraphrasing it. You should definitely check it out and just listen to the lyrics because they are eerie and haunting and it's so great paired with this groovy ass bass. It's such a bizarre blend and I couldn't recommend it more. bass intro, did you hear that shit? That's pretty sweet, I gotta say. And this whole song also is pretty sweet. And I know I've said a lot of times in this thing that this is my favorite, or one of my favorites, but this is one of my favorites. This one kicks ass. From a songwriting perspective, this song's interesting. I mean, the chorus is just a vocal harmony with the guitar. There's no lyrics. The two verses there are barely have any lyrics. Most of it is taken up by him just doing a weird like lead with his voice on, you know, dragging out um, some words for like a long time. It's really bizarre, but it's awesome. I don't know. Something about it just works great. And it's it's another one of those songs that's short, sweet, and to the point. And every time it's over, I'm like, damn it. Like, I want to listen to that again. Like, why wasn't that longer? But I think that's part of why it's so great. It just comes as this quick burst of energy right at the end of the album. And I mean, it's not really the end of the album, but it's the end of this sound. And it kind of is the end in a way. And we will get to that in just a minute. But really less than that, because it's not going to take a minute to get there. So this is the last track, and it really does feel like a send-off, just being this kind of somber, slow piano track. And to me, the vibe I get is it's like the uh, waking up the morning after drinking with a hangover at someone's house you don't really know, and you're just lying on the floor just thinking, man, what the hell am I doing? So these are some pretty ambiguous lyrics, but to me they sound like someone questioning the future and sort of wondering what they're doing, being unsure, looking at other people for examples, seeing how things turned out. Um, the last half of the lyrics are what I'm going to focus on mostly, but it starts with, uh, So these cities are sprouting like a spit in the eye, and this world isn't waiting, it's just passing me by, which, you know, makes me think... Even if you don't know what the hell you're going to do or what you're doing, the world still continues on. It's still moving. Um, 
I just peek in the window, looking inside. The butcher's got a fork in your face, but I'm standing alive. And maybe he's saying with this, like, you know, he sees somebody who is worse off or bitter or full of hate or something, and maybe he doesn't know what he's doing, but at least he's here alive. He's not, he doesn't have a fork in his face. And then it would all tie in with the um, this interview I saw one time where Josh talked about this song and how he, when he had just moved to Seattle, I believe, he went to a bar... And there's a drunk man just ranting about how he used to be a child actor and a a teen model or something. Um, And he was just this bitter, drunk asshole. And so that's what prompted the title of this song, and that would fit thematically in with that. I guess if this album was one big old party, this is the big old hangover at the end of it. So, uh, yeah. And so there you have it, dear listener, the eponymous Queens of the Stone Age album, summarized and analyzed by yours truly, Jared Kennedy. I hope you had a good time, and thanks for watching this far. Holy shit, you're a trooper. (laughs) If you'd like to hear me talk about a few more things, please stick around until after it fades to black. So first off, thank you so much for watching this thing the full way through. It really means a lot to me. Um, I have so many more albums I would love to talk about and share with you guys. And um, hopefully, if you listen to this all the way through, you check this album out, you find some new music, you like it, or at least hopefully you found what I had to say interesting. Um, Yeah, I had a ton of fun. I want to make more of these. So um, let me know what you guys think. You know, any suggestions, comments. If you want to talk about the album, if you've listened to it, I'd love to talk about it more down there. Um, yeah, so you guys have a fanciful day, and I am out.